Hey everybody, it's Gemma Forge. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to have you. Today we're gonna to be talking about hot weather at Walt Disney World. What you need to know to be prepared and to still have a fabulous time, even if it's 95 degrees and 90% humidity. So this is very much top of mind for me because I am leaving in just a few days for an entire week at Walt Disney World in very, very warm temperatures. And really, it can be very warm at Walt Disney World anytime, but if you're going anytime between mm, like the second half of April all the way until the end of September, you're pretty much guaranteed at least a few days in your trip where it is pretty miserable outside. The temperatures can get very hot, the humidity and the dew point can be very high, and it can make for an interesting time if you're not prepared. I think every year that we've gone down, the entire time I've been taking my family to Walt Disney World over the last several decades, it feels like there's always a family that clearly is not prepared. There's always somebody who's very red-faced. You'll even see the paramedics involved because people headed down there without really understanding what the heat and humidity can do to you. And I really feel you have to take it extremely seriously. And there are three basic things that I do very differently in the hot weather. I choose where I stay differently, I pack differently, and I tour differently during the day. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing we're going to get into is how I change where I stay. Now here's the thing. If it, I, Let's be honest, I like a good middle of the day break at Walt Disney World no matter what time of year I go, but if I'm going in hot weather, a break is mandatory. And I don't just mean because, you know, I like to be fancy and I like to just hang out at my resort. To me, physically, it is mandatory. Uh, I like the expression done by one. I like to get into the parks really early in the morning and then be completely done in that park by 1 p.m. Go back to our hotel to take a nap, probably shower. I'm going to change my clothes and then head back into the parks in the evening. That time back at the resort allows all of us to just reset. It allows us to get hydrated. It allows us to get maybe some salt in us if we've been sweating a lot and you will sweat a lot, a lot, a lot. And it just allows it to not feel miserable. I see families all the time who are just trying to push through because they paid all this money for this vacation. And that's when you end up dehydrated, very unhappy. Sometimes you get this thing called monkey butt. If you don't know what that is, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. <laughs> It's very highbrow here at Gentle Forge. So you really, um, you want to understand that the heat will come for you. And you're not superhuman and you're not special and you're not the one person that is gonna be able to survive all day in the Florida heat. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. It is almost as bad as Florida and it is not a badge of honor to push through. So because I feel that those middle of the day breaks are so mandatory, I am much more likely to spend more on my hotel. Now, bonus, a lot of times I find in the summer, you can find some really good deals. We are Disney Vacation Club members, and a lot of times our points go a lot further in some of the summer months than they do in some of the other months, which makes sense when you think about it. If at all possible, I like to be in a one bedroom villa because then I have access to a washer and dryer, which allows me to pack fewer clothes. We're gonna talk about packing in just a minute. And we just spend a lot more time at our resort if we go in the summer. If we go in January and the weather's really nice, we may be out and about all day long and our resort doesn't matter as much. I might even consider an off property stay. But if I am going in the summer, that afternoon break is mandatory and having it be as convenient and comfortable as possible really makes the difference for me. So I am absolutely okay with spending more money on that resort. Also, you know it's gonna be swimming pool weather and a nicer resort is gonna have a nicer pool. So if, if it's you know January, February, and you're not sure you're even gonna to wanna to swim, does the hotel pool really matter? Probably not. You go May, June, July, August, September, that pool is going to matter and I will be spending time at my resort pool on my upcoming trip. I promise I will. So, you know, this is the time to me to spend more money on a resort that you can really enjoy in the heat of the day when it's just miserable to be in the parks. So let's talk about how I pack differently. Now I have a few items in front of me that are things that I really only take in the hot weather months. And the first thing that is different for me than my rest of the year trips 
is instead of wearing mouse ears during the day, don't worry, I still wear my, my ears at night. I love my ears. Um, I am wearing ball caps and here's why. I really like to have uh, a little bit of shade on my face and also a little bit of sun protection on my face. That Florida sun is absolutely brutal. To me, I cannot get enough sunscreen on me and so having a hat is a big deal. You want to have one that's either tech fabric or at least has like some ventilation holes in it because you really need the heat to escape out of your head. Um, I see a lot of women wearing like the um, visors. I mean, guys too, but I think a visor is a really great idea because then the heat can still escape your head and you've got the shade. But some kind of a head covering that gives that little bit of coverage is a really big deal. And the mouse ears just do not hack it for me. And yeah, also bonus, I don't know if you have hair like mine that's curly, but but we're, we're turning into, you know, it will be Monica Geller hair in like two seconds flat. That is just the way it works in Florida. And the only year that I didn't have that problem was the year that I had a keratin treatment done. So ladies, if you know what I'm talking about, but if you even have wavy hair, Florida heat and humidity is going to get to your hair. So ball caps, great. They're awesome for keeping shade on your face and covering up Florida hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then another thing you really have to be careful about, obviously, is hydration. Now, this is what I have started taking. Um, my friend Angela Dahlgren was the one who first introduced me to this. I saw her using it on a trip we were on together, and I was like, what is that magnificent thing? So it's a water bottle, but it's totally squishable, and um, it packs up really, really small. Um, it has a little loop on here. You could attach it to the outside of your bag if you want, but it doesn't take up really any space. So what I do is, instead of carrying a big full water bottle into the parks and I don't did I not bring those in here I thought I brought them in here well, okay so I didn't but I'll just tell you what I do I bring the little um, like drink packet, the little individual serving ones that are for water bottle. You can get them in lemonade flavor and fruit punch flavor, all different flavors because the Florida water does have a strange taste to it. I'll tell you it's got it better. It used to be really bad, but it's definitely gotten better, but I still don't like the taste of Florida water. So I will put one of those little packets in here and then just fill it up at a water fountain and you've got accessible water all day, every day. Now, yes, it is true that any of the counter service places will give you a cup of ice or a cup of ice water, but I find they do it in little teeny cups and that is just not gonna hack it for me. So most of the drinking fountains, the water is at least room temperature. Sometimes you can find one where it's really cold. I mean, I probably should like rate the different um, water fountains. <laughs> <laughs> through Walt Disney World. Um, but you know, even room temperature water is okay. What you need to be doing is hydrating. And um, yeah, this is just great. And look, it takes up no space at all in my park bag. This one is by Camelback. And I will put the link below if you're interested in it, but this is a game changer. Okay, another thing, and I'm sure you guys have seen these, is to pack a little fan. Now this one, I actually saw on um, the trackers. They had it last year. And there's a little space right here where you fill it up with water. It's available on Amazon. On. I'll link it below. Um, and it has three different speeds right here. One, two, whoops, I turned it off. One, two, three. <laughs> anyway, these actually, I, I know it seems like you're just pushing around hot air, but when it's like stagnant and really humid, especially if you're standing in a line, this will save your life. Now, I have to tell you, I, I've only used it once where I filled up the little water reservoir, but it does have that thing where you press the other button and the water will come out and it's supposed to cool you even more. I don't love those as much. I just get weirded out by like, how do you clean it and whatever? So I sort of wish I had bought one without the water reservoir, um, but just having the fan itself, oh my gosh, game changer. Okay, can I just use that the entire time I'm filming? No, I'll turn that off. <laughs> the other thing that we always take that I usually have in my bag in cooler months, but it's not as necessary is body glide. And we're gonna talk about monkey butt a little bit. I don't know who first started calling it monkey butt, but it's basically the rash that you get anywhere that your body chafes, any place where skin touches skin. And that's all I'm going to say. That's <laughs> I'll let you determine what that is for you. For me, we're going to put it here. We're going to have it on our legs, uh, all of those different places. And if you put this on in the morning, and then if you take your break, if you put it on again before you go back into the parks in the afternoon, you will not develop that rash. Uh, I We had an entire day of touring taken out of one of our vacations because one of our sons 
developed like that prickly heat rash so bad that he was in significant pain. And we went to first aid, we're like, what can we do? We really don't wanna stop the vacation. They're like, there's nothing you can do. He's gotta get off his feet and he's got to dry that out. So highly, highly recommend this. This is what I used to use when I ran marathons and I swear by it. And then another bonus use for this is to use it on your feet to prevent blisters. That is a runner's trick that a lot of normal people don't know about. But if you rub everybody's feet with this in the morning and also between their toes, you'll get ahead of it and you will not struggle with blisters. So body glide. And then as far as how I pack clothes, as I said before, I like staying in a one bedroom because of the option to have a washer and dryer. You are going to need twice as much underwear. You're gonna need twice as many shirts. You are not going to be able or want to put on the same shirt when you come back from your break that you wore in the morning. Like I can't even express to you how this takes people by surprise. But it, when you get into the parks, within like an hour to an hour and a half, everyone in your party is going to be drenched. And this is true even if people who don't sweat that much, and I'm really not trying to you know, give TMI or whatever, but everybody there is in the same boat as you are. And so unless you're someone who has some kind of disorder where you don't sweat, in which case that could actually be really dangerous, you're gonna sweat through your clothes. Ladies, you're gonna sweat through your bra, you're gonna sweat through your sports bra, you're, everybody's gonna sweat through their underwear. It's, it's gonna happen. So you wanna take twice as much as you think you need. Again, with the washer and dryer, I don't necessarily do that because I'll do laundry pretty regularly. Um, shorts, sometimes I can get by with wearing twice, but um, even with shorts, it's, it's a little iffy. So um, sometimes at the end of a Walt Disney World trip in the summer, I've just wanted to burn everyone's clothes because, because it's that bad. You think I'm exaggerating because you've never been to Walt Disney World in the summer? And then go on your trip and tell me if I'm wrong. Spoiler. I'm not wrong. Oh, one more thing I thought about with packing. If you're gonna swim a lot, everybody needs at least two swimming suits because swimming suits will not dry in Florida. They just don't. I, I don't know what it is. It's not like the hotel room will even feel that humid, but you'll lay out your bathing suit thinking it's gonna dry and like four days later, it's still damp. Again, with why I love having a washer and dryer, but you're gonna want at least two, if not three swimsuits for everyone in your party if you plan on swimming every day um, or unless you're someone that loves putting on a damp swimsuit. Ugh, no, I hate that. <laughs> If you know, you know. And then lastly, how is our park touring different in the summer? Well, I already mentioned that we take a nice long afternoon break. That's probably the biggest thing. I'm also one that is far more likely to be in a park late at night. Normally I like to be back at my resort by like 10 o'clock, but if the parks are open later in the summer, you'll find me there later. And that's because the evenings can actually be the most pleasant time of the day. In the mornings, the temperatures may be lower, but the humidity is also super high. The evenings, however, a lot of times there's a lovely breeze and it's my favorite to be out after dark in the summer at Walt Disney World. And if it doesn't get dark until, you know, nine o'clock at night, that means you're out pretty late. So definitely we take more advantage of the later hours. And bonus, because they usually have extended hours in the summer, that makes that a lot easier easier to do. The other thing we're going to do is make sure we have an eye on eating and that we are eating in air conditioning. Now, I tend to plan more table service dining reservations in the summer because even though there are plenty of counter service places that have indoor dining, you're never guaranteed to find a spot. And I'm telling you, when, when it's 1130 and it's time for lunch, getting out of the heat and the crowds and feeling that blast of air conditioning is just like a heavenly experience. So I will just make sure I plan our dining really, really well so that either it's in a table service restaurant Restaurant, or is it a place like Satuli Canteen where I know there is plenty of indoor seating? The last thing you want to do is be stuck eating a hot dog out on the hub grass when it's 100 degrees at one o'clock in the afternoon in July at the Magic Kingdom. That is not a good look. Just, I may have done it. You, you just, you don't, just don't do that to yourself. The other thing when it comes to park touring is you are going to need to slow your roll. Now, I've lived in the South for many years of my life. And sometimes I think there is this stigma that we move slower in the South because we just don't have as much to do or maybe we're not as intelligent. And I would like to tell you right now, we move slower because of the damn heat. So you want, I don't know what that accent was. <laughs> you want to 
plan for moving slower. You want to understand that you're just, your, your physical body cannot rush through Disney World with that kind of heat and humidity. It just can't. And if you try, you are going to make yourself miserable and you are going to make everyone in your party miserable. So just accept that you might not get as much done as you would if you went in January. That's okay, but I don't want you going into the trip with expectations that everyone is just gonna be able to move like this. You might first thing in the morning, but I guarantee by about 10, 30 or 11, that is gonna slow down considerably. And you wanna be prepared for that so that you don't get frustrated or have your goals blocked. Just maybe take what your expectations are for January and cut them in half in July. Think I'm kidding? I'm not. It's real. The heat takes it out of you and you're going to be way more tired than you can even fathom. So just be very cautious of not planning things unrealistically and allowing for what the heat will do to your body. I'm sure I could talk about this for hours. Um, there are many, many things about Walt Disney trips in the summer that are a challenge and an opportunity, but I will also tell you that some of my favorite Walt Disney World trips have been in the summer. So don't let this video scare you. Plan well, specifically in terms of hydration, medical issues, use that body glide. Be smart, use your common sense, take those afternoon breaks, and I promise you, you will have a fabulous vacation. And I'll be there real soon, so maybe I'll see you there. Whatever you're doing today, I hope you're being really good to each other, and I'll see you next time. Bye!